groups, and typically the aberration isn't pleasant. It, it, it ha There's a way in which people are told that you can have some special esoteric knowledge that's hidden from the rest of humanity. If you galvanize together, you can use that to achieve something that you can't achieve normally. Do you, do you worry, Terry, that your mother in memory is going to be partially blamed? I, I know she probably already is. Co-founder. I mean, you're right. Yeah. Even though she wasn't present at the act and you're convinced she would not have done the act, she goes down in history as the co-founder. Right. Sad. It is. It really is. We're going to take a break and come back with more. We'll be including your phone calls and then later Nichelle Nichols, the sister of the late Thomas Nichols, former star of Star Trek. We'll be right back. We're back in Portland is Aaron St. Pierre, a former member of Heaven's Gate, and here in Los Angeles, Hank Hanegraaff, president of the Christian Research Institute and host of a radio show, The Bible Answer Man, heard in over 100 markets throughout North America six days a week. Terry Nettles, the daughter of the late Bonnie Nettles, who co-founded Heaven's Gate. What, uh, before we take our first call, what, Terry, are you hoping to do by coming forward, by appearing, by speaking? I would like to make people aware of what's going on with cults and what have you. That you're not, you're not going to find what you want by following some other man. That you've got to look towards Jesus, and that's the only way it's going to happen. But and in a sense, Hank, and I, this is just asked as a question: When Jesus started, didn't most of the population consider him a cult? Yeah, and but with Jesus, followers who yeah. walked around with him and believed him. Jesus Christ didn't ask people to believe pseudoscience. He didn't ask them to stretch their credulity. He said, "Look, the evidence is overwhelming that I am fulfilling the prophecies." You have Moses and the prophets look at the evidence and the fulfillment. So one is based, again, on blind subjectivism. The other is on objective verities. And a Christian doesn't say, don't, uh, they don't say, trust what I'm saying. There's, look at the evidence, accept it or reject it. But did the majority there at that time consider him cultish, didn't they? Oh, absolutely. So if you become, if you become well known, if a lot of people accept you, are you then no longer a cult? Forget the Christ aspect or the Jewish aspect. No, if I, you and I start an organization and we got 30 million members, we're not a cult anymore. No, that's not the criteria. One is based on socio-psychological manipulation and blind subjectivism. The other is based on objective evidence, and you. you ought to be able to look at it and make a decision whether you want to accept or reject it so based on that evidence. So you know it when you see it. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's take a call. Fairfax, California. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm, I'm on the air. Okay. Uh, I have a question both for Hank and uh, the other gentleman, and it's this. Are there any other cults that are around right now that we should be uh, keeping our eye on or looking out for? Uh, the reason I ask is that I went to uh, Heaven Gate's meeting when they came through Fairfax, California, three years ago. And the reason I went was because the flyer was so weird, I had to go see who these weird people were, <laughs> because I knew right away from what was in the flyer that it was some kind of strange cult that I certainly would have never joined in a million years. Okay, good question. Do you think there are others around like it, Hank? Yeah, absolutely. In Do fact, uh, the sad thing is there are literally thousands of millennial madness cults. And thousands? Yes, thousands. And I'm not using hyperbole or overshooting to make a point. That is a literal thing. Aaron, you think so? I would think so, yes. There, I think people are really hungry now. We're, we're finding ourselves more and more dissatisfied with the world around us. And if you think someone, so, Terry? Yes, definitely. We'll take another break and come right back with more phone calls. This is Larry King Live. Monday night, a major show on cancer. And among the guests will be Robert Urich, Sam Donaldson, Michael Milken, and Morton Downey Jr. Don't go away. By the way, Hank Hanegraaff has a book out that came out just about the time this broke from Word Publishing called Counterfeit Revival. There you see its cover. It's all about cults. Yeah, it actually deals with the principles of social psychological manipulation, and the tragedy is this is not only happening in cults, it's now becoming commonplace within evangelical Christian churches. Wait a minute. You're saying in Sunday morning at 11 o'clock this is happening? Yeah, absolutely. People are being worked into altered states of consciousness through repetitive physical motions. I was just in a church down in Pensacola where a lady in the choir was weaving her head back and forth violently for two and a half hours. And she'd been doing it for a year and a half every time she comes into the sanctuary. How about this guy, we, the gentleman we had on last week who cures people in rallies and they fall down on the floor? 
All is that a danger? Uh, absolutely. All he's doing is the exact same thing that you, he's, he's working people in an altered state of consciousness, he's using peer pressure, exploiting expectations. That's why you have all these testimonials. Uh, but when you really pin him down, you're not going to find any toupees on the platform. You're not going to find any cork legs, and he's not going to be able to raise anybody from the dead. They talk about it, but they can't demonstrate it. Toronto, hello. Hi, Larry. Hi. I have a question for either Terry or Aaron. Sure. And the question is, since they felt that they would be resurrected in three and a half days, why did the members of the cult continue the mass suicide when obviously that wasn't happening? That's a fair question. What do you think, Aaron? My interpretation is that um, Bo was among the last people to take his life and may have told people that he would be there to, to receive them when they came back. So it's very possible that he, um, he just misled them there, too. Terry? Agree? Yeah, the same thing. He, um, he was so lost without my mom. I mean, even the empty chair that he has sit, sitting next to him in the video, that uh, he honestly believed, I think, that my mom was waiting for him there. Athens, Greece. Hello. Hi, Larry. Good morning. Uh, Hi. This question is for Hank. I find it fascinating. I'm an American living in Greece. I have a brother who's now following a Christian charismatic leader, which it seems a lot like to our family is actually a cult. I mean, he's talking about manipulation, peer pressure, and about mass suggestion, which seems a lot like a cult. I want to know why in America, when the minute Jesus Christ's name is attached to it, it's automatically accepted. And yet my brother is completely, completely uh, and this is not someone that's t healing or touching hands, so I really take offense. I, I, I find it fascinating that Hank is, uh, Hank is talking way, about mass that, does that not have, that, have you seen that in Greece, sir? But it's fascinating to me. Have you seen it, it in Greece? The minute sir, someone says sir, Jesus have you Christ, seen it, sir, have you seen it in Greece? Uh, actually, I've seen it uh, slightly in Greece. They do have in I'm sorry? The, the cults in Greece. Yes, there are, well, there are two, uh, there are actually two churches here that are not Greek Orthodox. All right, uh, thank you. What uh, about the uh, use of the name Jesus Christ? Well, th that's the problem. You, get you a, put Jesus Christ on and it's accepted? Well, here's the problem. With the kingdom of the cult, you've got to learn to scale the language barrier because all kinds of people are using the name Jesus Christ, but they're pouring their own meanings into the words. Same thing. Benny Hinn may use the term faith, but it's a metaphysical concept of faith. Faith is a force. Words are the containers of the force. Through the force of faith, you create your own reality. So you have to learn to scale the language barrier because they're using Christian terminology, but they're pouring cultic meanings into the words. So there's a lot of false around. Yeah, absolutely. God must be ticked. Yeah, I, I, I think so, because all kinds of people are being deluded. I mean, this is not based on historic evidence. It's based on the queer predilections of a founder of a cult that is oftentimes a deceiver and in some cases self-deceived or delusionary himself. We're going to take a break, come back with more, and then we'll meet Nichelle Nichols. This is Larry King live in Los Angeles. Some more phone calls and then Nichelle, don't go away. To access CNN Interactive on the World Wide Web, call 1-800-WORLDNET, extension CNN, for free Internet software. We're back. Uh, a few more minutes with our guests and some more phone calls. Hank, people can contact you if they want information about cults, right? Yes, they can. You have a number? Yeah, P.O. Box 7000, Rancho Santa Margarita, zip code, uh, California, Southern California, zip code 92688. Uh, to Albuquerque, New Mexico with our guests. Hello. Joe. Yes, go ahead. I have, yes, Larry. Good show. Thank I you. have a comment and a question, please. Sure. Uh, in my opinion, I unfortunately think that there was one suicide and 38 murders. And my hearts go out to the families of those who are no longer with us. Aaron was talking earlier about going and meeting his, his God in the body that, that he is in now. If that's the case, why would they have put their packed suitcases next to the bed and their IDs in their pockets if they thought they were going to shed their containers? Why do you think, Aaron? That's a good point. I believe that at least the people who started out with them were were made to believe that they would literally go in their bodies. I, I've been thinking about this all week, and and I think they believed they were going to be resurrected on Easter and actually go to heaven. 
What do you think they thought, Terry? I think the same thing. Um, since it didn't happen back in 76 or 77 when it was supposed to happen, they had to keep changing their story. And then when my mom died, Herf really had to come up with something to make it work. One murder, 38 suicides? I think it's a good way of putting yeah. it because really? these people actually believed that they were going to take their suitcases and be pioneers in a new level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Montreal, hello. Good evening. It's Hi. Akiva, Colton Nook, Montreal. I'd like to ask, was this something that this not was preaching to them all along, this horrible act of suicide? No. Was he, it, was he doing it all? I'm sorry, Aaron, was he? No, he did not. In fact, the, we were supposed to remain alive. He and Peep had said that they were going to make a demonstration of dying and then resurrecting after three and a half days, but that never came about. And the, the only, that was the only mention of the possibility of death. For the rest of us, in the beginning, we were going to go to heaven in our physical bodies, the one that, we, the one that I have right now. All right, what now, Terry? What are you going to, what do you do, by the way? What, what, how do you earn a living? I'm a production assistant right now. Living here? Uh-huh. And you're going to continue to speak out on? You bet. Think you can help people? Hope so. Aaron, what are you doing now for a living? Uh, I'm a registered nurse. I um, work in a, a local clinic, and I'm very happy right now. Attracted to any other groups? No, no, absolutely not. And Hank, uh, you going to be successful, you think, or not? There will always be needy people. There will always be people playing on needy people. There will always be the button pushers. Yep. And I think the cults are the unpaid bills of the churches. And I think that Christianity ought to be all about self-sacrifice, not about self-aggrandizement. And if the church goes through a reformation, the world can experience revival. But first, what happens is the church needs to get back to basics because there are all kinds of people that are hurting and they're not finding love and purpose in the church and they're falling out the back doors of the kingdom of the cults. So you think the church is failing? Absolutely. I think the church needs a reformation. We need to get back to basics. We need to teach people what it means to have intimacy with the living Lord of the universe through prayer. We need to use our time, talent, and treasure for the edification of other people rather than looking at what the church can do for us. Because the search goes on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you all very much. Aaron, thanks very much. Continued good luck. Hank, thanks very much for nice joining us. You. Looking forward to reading the book. And Terry, good luck. Terry Nettles, Hank Hanegraaff, and Aaron St. Pierre. Nichelle Nichols was with us uh, last week. All too briefly, uh, we had about six or seven minutes. We thought it deserved a lot more time. She played Lieutenant Huru on, of course, on Star Trek. Uhuru, I always pronounce that wrong. It's hard for me to say. <laughs> my tongue got caught in my teeth. And uh, she lost her brother. We'll be right back with Nichelle. Don't go away.